Hello, hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Musings and Music Show. I am Egben Biwan Mojimbo and I'm coming to you on Vosa World Radio, where it's going to be radio first and then later on on YouTube, because Vosa World has a YouTube channel. And I'm excited about this show because I have a young lady here with me. I'm going to have her introduce herself first before we really begin. So go ahead and uh, let us know who you are. How would you describe yourself? Who are you? Um, hello. Thank you very much, Vusa World Radio, for having me here. I'm called Kamga Maiva from Bay, and I'm a wife, a mom of two, a girl child advocate and women empowerment, empowerment advocate. I'm a financial controller by profession, and above all, I am the president and founder of an initiative organization called Children Organization. Wow, that's a lot that you just crammed into the little one. It didn't take too long to say it, but there is a lot <laughs> that one can pack out, unpack from what you just said there. That's a lot of things to be and a lot of things to do already. So you, you mean you have a regular nine to five job and then you do this philanthropy, uh, not for profit on the side. Yes, I do. Okay. okay, so let me just, even just to make sure that people know, where are you coming to us today from? Where are you based? Um, I am based in Boya, but I recently moved to Douala because I got a new job here in Douala. So I'm talking from Douala now, Douala Cameroon. Okay. Is that going to, let me, before we even go on there, since you just mentioned that, is that going to affect the organization in any way? Was it headquartered somewhere? Does it matter? No, it's not going to affect the organization in any way because uh, the organization is made up with passionate team members who are based in Dubuya and in Douala. So we have a virtual office. We, we talk uh, virtually and we do advocacy online. Uh, and anytime we have an outreach, we all meet in wherever we are going to be having the outreach. So if it's in Boya, all of us are going to be in Boya. So it doesn't disturb in any way. Yeah. I think just make sure that anybody who knows can know that hey, don't don't panic. But she says she's in Douala, yeah. it's it's going to go on. So, well, let's just talk about the it. It is a, a, a not for profit organization called She is Strength. Did I catch that right? Yes. Uh be better as a sis S I S Sis. S I S Sis. And that sis yes. S is for she, the I for is, and the S, the final S, S for strength. How did you come up with that name? Um, she is strength is like our logo says, if you can see our logo, we have a, um, like the sign of like strength, like when you put your arm up and defining right. strength, the strength mm -hmm. is in time. So we say every woman has that strength and ability to do whatever she wants, she can, she wants to do and be whatever she wants to be. So we are saying that women have the strength and the power, the strength and power is in your mind. So women have the strength and women are the future. Correct. Okay. So have you had anybody anybody do some pushback and say, okay, so what about men and boys? I get a lot of that. I have a lot of when anytime I post about things for women, like I say invest in women, he gets so angry and he's like, What about men? People don't talk about men. Men deserve to have listening ears too. We we need to support men and all it's not difficult, it's not um easy for them also. But <laughs> regardless, our initiative is for women and we are not leaving men aside. We are just saying we focus on the women because that's what our initiative is all about. Correct. And of course, we, we have always said that those of us who are women's advocates and things, we always say, if you empower a woman, what you don't empower her for just herself. You exactly. empower her so she can be yep, a good wife, like you said you are, a good mother, like you said you definitely are, when the things, when everything goes well, out here, the people out here in, this, in America say, when mom's not happy, ain't nobody happy. And when she's happy, everybody's happy. So that's why we tend yeah. to focus on that, just to just to clear the air. It's not as if we don't care about the men at all. We are the ones that give birth to men as well. So, so it's not as if we don't care yeah. about them. But the focus is women. Without forgetting that it had been, that the focus had been mostly on men. It's not that long ago. In fact, it still happens now that, that, that people who have kids, they can only send, afford to send two to school. 
they pick the guy, the boys and let the lady girls stay home. It's just that. Stay home. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? Um, that's a norm we are trying to break. That that's a norm that we are actually trying to break. That's the reason why I started this initiative in the first place. And we are taking little steps, the least we can, but I know with time we are going to achieve our goal. Right, right. You're already doing something. So let us find out what it is that you're doing. So you already mentioned kind of that it's virtual. The the initiative itself is virtual. You can do online, and then you plan activities. So what does uh SIS, what does she strength really do? What's the vision? What's the mission? What are the goals? If you can address that. Okay. Um she strength organization is a non-profit organization dedicated to empower young girls through exceptional educational opportunities to enable them reach their full potential and um excel as leaders in the society. Uh, we envision a world where all girls have access to quality education and are empowered to take on leadership roles in the community. Mm -hmm. Our objectives are to uh, provide scholarship opportunities to girls from undeserved communities, um, organize mentorship programs, vocational trainings to teach these young girls essential skills, and also to advocate for policy changes to make education more inclusive and accessible for all genders. Oh, wow. You see, there you, you let's say accessible for all genders. So it's not as if boys yeah. are being left behind. We, we, we've always understood that the, it, the, there was no balance, there was a lack of balance there. It was more boys, less girls. I was trying to get them to bridge the gap, kind of, give yeah. them the same opportunities. So I can already sense there that it's not necessarily the grammar school thing. When you say education opportunities, it's not like they must go to GHS. They must go to Second yeah. Baptist College, Lords, and the rest of them. You have, it looks like you are also vocation oriented. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. teach them different skills. Recently, we had a training on cake, commercial cake and yogurt, where we were teaching the girls how to make cake and yogurt, which can help them maybe um improve their entrepreneurial skills. Can start to maybe uh, get into a cake business or yogurt business, which will help you like secure some money in. And even if you're going to school, you can, it can help you like help your parents to assist them and also be financially dependent. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that you yeah. can do things for yourself. Not, yes, I understood you. You meant financially independent so you can take care of yourself. And we all know where that leads to. When you have your, your financial independence, it's not to make to threaten the men because of course say, okay, yes, that's why she got her money now. She does not have my time. The idea was that they're supposed to get that to also complement and help. So the burden is not on the man alone to be the breadwinner. Oh. Sometimes it's them frustrated and everything. Uh it's also being able to bring a fair share of the bacon to the to the table. And also not to always have to be there with your hand outstretched, beg, beg, beg all the time which kind of sometimes strips you of your of your dignity. If you have there forever having to beg, even for money to go buy salt, it's it, it's, it can be two ways. And knowing to the man who you're forever begging and then uh, working on your own self-esteem because you are forever having to go with your little, uh, to sweet talk somebody to give you basic things that you can get from the cake making uh, skills that you've learned and the yogurt making skills that you just mentioned. So how does anybody reach you Okay, so some girl is listening, somebody's listening. I would like to say, I'd like to let my niece know about this uh, initiative. How do they do that? Where do they find you? We have um, our social media handles. We have an um, Instagram account, which is called, um, uh, handle is She Strength Organization. She is Strength ORG. LinkedIn, same thing. She is Strength Organization. Facebook, She is Strength Organization. Twitter, She is Strength Organization. And when you visit, our social media handles. We have our numbers there and we have our emails there. You can always email us or get to us directly through our numbers. We do not yeah. have a website, Just yet. but we have their handles where you can easily reach us. Yes, I'm sitting right here, uh, millions of miles away from where she is, and I just pulled that up right here. This is LinkedIn. I just pulled that up right, right here. I can see a phone number right there, 6532-95982. It tells you, it gives you a description of the thing, tells you where the headquarters is, um, everything right there. 
these days there's no excuses I could not find you can find people are there once you have a presence like she says she has this Instagram I looked at that yesterday that's where I saw the this lady that was just so happy she they actually the cake baking thing was taking place she says oh she said the cakes are on the fire <laughs> she's only about <laughs> to get ready she was thanking okay. everybody in this whole world sorry <laughs> I, will, I will tell you a short story about that <laughs> please go ahead Okay, so um, when we were doing the community walk, we we're moving to a uh, campaign on, on the training. We had a training um, over the weekend. We went on a Tuesday, so advocacy and all, trying to talk with the young girls to make them participate for the training and all. So we came, we entered into this compound, and there was this mama. She was actually talking with her daughter, and then she listened. She was inside the house, and then she came out and she was like, and then why are we not talking to her? Like she's really interested. She really wants to do this training. She wants to do it because that's something she does. She sells scotch egg and that's what she uses to feed her child, uh, her daughter and her grandchildren. Mm -hmm. We said, uh, uh, because initially the training were targeted young girls, young IDP girls from the age of mm -hmm. 12 to 17. We told her it's just 12, 17 years. Next time we are going to organize a training for her. She yeah, insisted, really. she said, even if we and no, even if we don't take her number, she's going to be there. <laughs> we said, okay. We're just accepting with doubt, obviously, knowing she's not going to come. Guess what? The next day, um, during the training, she was the first person to show up. Mind you, there was a lot of rain. Rain was seriously falling, but that mama was the first person to show up. And she was so keen and attentive during the training. So it was really, really lovely to watch. That's the reason why she insisted she's going to make that video. She was so happy because after that, she had to go and do this cake and yoga to um, add up to her scotch egg business. So it was really, a, it was really, really a good thing. You got the chance to see live and probable what the work you do really means. What city was that? Yeah. What, what, what city was that? Was that Boya or Douala? Boya. Boya. It was Boya. It, it is hard. It is yeah. refreshing to, to, to watch. I just couldn't put it up on here. And I've had us listen to her. You can see that's not somebody whom they begged to come and they, kicking and screaming to come and speak. She was talking. You can tell from her soul she was overjoyed. <laughs> she yeah. was happy to be at the training. And it speaks really well of you. I saw that on, I, that was Instagram. But I saw, I saw that there. So just to say, people who are listening and who are interested, they could about having benefiting from the skills. What about sponsorship? Is that something you're open to as well? Would you be interested in having sponsors coming to sponsor? And in if so, in what ways can people who are listening who are not just interested in benefiting from she is strength? How do they give to she is strength? Um, okay, thank you so much for this point. We uh as we already said, we is we are still a startup and we are still very young, so we are very open for sponsorship because the little we have obviously isn't enough, but it's okay. But we are open to sponsorship. You can sponsor us with um gifts, gifts to you give gifts like um uh, let's say this hygienic products, sanitary pad, towels, exercise exercise books, and you can also sponsor financially, which will help us provide scholarships. For these girls, because every uh, like they say, Rancho Escole, we have scholarship programs to enable girls from underserved communities to go back to school. Actually, during this Ambazonian crisis, there are a lot of young girls who are not going to school right now. So, um, what will really be of great help help us uh, provide scholarship opportunities, and, and also when we are organizing outreach programs, um, say we are going to uh donate things to girls who lack. Like there are so many girls who still really don't have these hygienic products. It's really going to go a long way to help us and help the community as well. So we are open to sponsorship of any kind, partnerships to volunteering, like can volunteer with your skills. We need grant writers, we need expertise of so many fields. So we are open to have, uh, to receive a lot of support from the public. There you go. And that is the public that we're trying to reach with this little uh, radio and later on YouTube show we're doing. So people want to help. I want, they keep saying, I want to help. I'm not sure how. They cannot maybe go ahead and go to the field and start from scratch. But then you have somebody who's doing this work seriously. 
what we can do is support that effort in as many ways as she has listed right there. If it's not financial, then you go and actually do support your own skills. She talked about mentorship. You are the person with the, with the experience. Uh, you go and mentor. Sometimes you have you can do something as basic as hygienic products, like as she said. That's another thing I saw. I did my homework. I went and looked at that Instagram page. There was a whole march about that you all organized about no to menstruation uh, issues that people have, which sometimes we don't even realize there's even an issue. You just have a period, then so what's the big deal? You don't realize that there's somebody who, for whom that time of the month they dread it because they don't even have what it takes to be clean at that point in time. So donating those items, so you have to donate them. Yes, I think your, the best bet is for them to go again to the social media handles and contact you that way, right? Yeah, absolutely. Go find the number, call a number, find the number, uh, find the number, call the person and arrange for what you have to be donated. And then you, you, you speak with them about how to get that done. So what have been your challenges so far? I'm guessing it might uh, reflect what you just said, well, for what you need. What have the challenges been so far? Uh, if you want mind telling us what any of them, what, what has been the biggest challenge or any challenge so far? Um, I would say um, cultural, um, like these deep-rooted cultural norms and gender biases. You know, some families still have the notion of uh, girls are girls are are grown up are, are being groomed to be wives and mothers and not leaders and students. You know, so it's that's really been very challenging trying to break those norms. That's really been challenging. Oh. Which 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 people call also we go on lack of. We also have lack of resources mm -hmm. to campaign for the education. Or there are so many people who don't have the finances to go back to school. So that has been a great barrier. Yeah. You talked about the, the scholarships. I'm still amazed that those those what well, they're calling them the glass ceilings here, where people just don't for for uh, there for women. Some are subtle, some are open. Uh, we're sitting here in the in the country that's supposed to be the biggest nation on the planet, quote unquote. Haven't had a female president so far. I was just a second ago watching the whole Kamala Harris thing and the idea that she be run for president and stuff. And I'm looking at it and going, that would be a first because um, there's still those little uh, barriers and those biases, you use the right name for it. People just have that feeling. Sometimes, have you, I was going to ask you, have you seen cases where the women themselves feel like they shouldn't even be doing it? But it's one thing to have people, the bias again, working against them. But have you encountered the fact that sometimes you have a woman who doesn't even believe she can or should be doing this? Yes, yes, yes. I have encountered a young girl. Mm, there was a time I uh, um, I was in the salon doing my hair and there's this young girl who sells um, snails, Congo meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I asked her why she isn't going to school and she said um, they don't have money to send her to school. I asked her if she asked brother, she said yes. I asked her if they are going to school. She said, yes, they are going to school. I said, then why are you not going to school? She said, because her parents said her brother should go to school. She's going to go to school next year when they are going to save us save up money. So you see, um, and she she it was very it was a very normal thing to her. Like she was not saying it with um, fear or regret or whatever. She, and she's she's not that small, that's a girl of about 12 years old. She wow. said her goes to school. She's a woman, so you know women, women can go to school at any time. Even if she doesn't go to school, there's no problem because she's going to get married. So you see her still having that mentality. It's so it was really, you see how people still have that mentality, like the woman can stay and get married. You don't need to go to school. That's what she said. She said she can That's go to school married. at any time. Yeah. yeah she at any time even if she doesn't go to school she's going to get married so it's not a problem and i asked her what does she want to be in future she said she does not know what she wants to be in future she does not know what she wants to be in future yeah. so it was really just Mind. yeah it was really sad and i was like so people still have this belief and honestly i i knew people have people believe, still have this mentality but i had not seen it yeah so it was really a very sad thing. I'm, I'm even sitting here myself and going, where? 
I'm just my heart is breaking for the for the for the poor girl. I mean, it's one thing to have all the possibilities and everything, and you make a, a decision on your own to say, I I I do have my degree, I do have this, but I'd rather just be stay at home, mom. That's something. And she, you see, she's not even thinking about the fact that okay, you marry the man who's looking after you, and that marriage breaks up. What happens to your kids? Or unfortunately, he happens to pass on. What happens to those kids? You are supposed to have a skill or something to fall back on, an education, a skill or something to keep you going. You have an uphill task, my dear, you do. You do have an uphill task to get this going and all of us keep talking. That's the reason I'm sitting here doing this is to keep on saying, let us not assume. Because some of us have been in places and you may start thinking, ah, that's a, that, that's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Everybody now, the girl child, the girl child, everybody now is on board. No, this is somebody in this 21st century who's 12, and that's all that she's thinking. My heart bleeds for her and others like her. Who it's not even that there are barriers there that are preventing them from doing what they like to do. She doesn't even have aspirations to do anything. She's not even yeah, dreaming not... of anything. Yeah. yeah so we are that's the reason why we, we, we organize a lot of trainings and mentorship programs for girls like that. Like when it's very important for them to have mentors. It's very important for them to have mentors to change that mindset. When you have a mentor who talks with you, uh, your mindset is going to change. Like you need to see yourself like someone who can get there. You are not just a woman, but you are also born to be a leader. You are born to be whatever you want to be. There are women who are politicians. There are women. Who, I told her. I told her that there are women who do a lot of things. So you can. It doesn't mean you will not get married. Yes, you are going to get married. You are going to be a mom. You are going to be a good wife. But who are you? Aside being that, who are you? What do you do? So you need you, you need a lot of mentorship. Like if you want to be empowered, you need to be mentored. That's that's right. the way it is. Right. You organize a lot for girls like this. That is what the whole thing is about. And sometimes you still have people who come and push against things. That have you have you experienced that at all? You like you said, a, a father who comes and says, "I don't want, don't take my daughter to this year thing that you are trying to empower." The word "empower" scares the living daylights out of them. Empower means yes. you know, now to come and yes. Have you had that? Either a brother or a dad or somebody saying, "I or a husband saying, I don't want my wife or daughter or uh, person to be involved in that kind of thing." Have you had that yet? Yes, I've had one, but he, he did not come to us directly saying, I don't want my daughter to be part of it, but his actions say, said it all. When we were uh, moving to get the participants for our training, we got to this house and we spoke. First of all, I don't know if it's his daughter. I don't know if it's his daughter because when we spoke about the whole thing, he was like, he doesn't have any girl child. We ran across a girl I saw outside and she said, she said her father was inside the house. When I entered, he said he does not have any daughter. Then I told him, I saw a girl outside. He said, um, he was like, oh, okay, 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 this girl. Yeah, he said, okay, no problem. Then he asked her if she wants to be part. She was so happy and she was like, yes, you know the assignment. She was like, yes. He said, okay, we should take her, her, her number and you should take his number and call for a reminder. Um, five minutes later, he was like, oh, he forgot to tell us. He has um, he had a funeral on that Saturday and Friday. He had a funeral on Friday. I said, okay, maybe she doesn't come on Friday. What about Saturday? He said, even on Saturday. So unfortunately, she's not going to be part of that. So I could see that he didn't want her to participate in the training. So I don't know the reason why he did that, but it was really, <laughs> it was really something else. Yeah. And I, I keep saying, we since we are the women who birth all of these people, we are the mothers. We have to also work on our sons because they become husbands and they become uncles later on down the road. We too can do something about this whole setup by also telling them, helping to change their mindsets while we are raising them. Because you see, he he clearly is um, a product of what environment he to grew up in, where maybe his mother said all the women sweep the compound and blah, 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 all the guys go to school. That's what he knows. So we have to do the things where we tell kids, the same way we tell our sons, Hey, pass go kitchen. Don't sit down and think you're going to have a wife who will just sit down there and be the only one doing the uh, cooking. You can do it just as she can, she can help. I tell my daughter, get up the ladder there and change the light bulb. You know, it's not, the, we, I know we have gender roles and that's not a bad thing. We're not talking against that. We're saying, at least be empowered that you can do it in the case where should it happen, where you need to step up. 
and be, be able to be there. You should just equip yourself, yourself with all the skills that are needed. So I don't want to keep you too much. You're a busy person. And for you, it's much later out than it is for me out here. I'm going to go ahead and ask you, what is it that you had? If you had somebody sitting in front of you right there, that's not me. The public, imagine that the public is this one person sitting in front of you. What would you tell them? What would you want to see happen? What are your future aspirations? And how can they, uh, how do they fall into those future aspirations? What would you like to see happen to SIS uh, in the future? Uh, I envision, I our uh, uh, biggest aspiration is to have a training center for young girls, in young girls, internet, internet, uh, internet, sorry, IT, teaching the young girls IT, teaching them different skills, leadership programs to teach them how to um, excel as leaders, maybe in the sector of public speaking, um, boost their confidence in different ways, like we just envision a a, a world where we can get these girls to be whatever they want to be in so many ways. So what I can tell the world is um, try as much as you can to always educate the girls around you about self-empowerment. Mm -hmm. Yes, try as much as you can to educate the girls around you self-empowerment and also allow them to speak up encourage them to speak up not just allowing them but encourage the girls to speak up there are so many girls who hide a lot you can be abused uh, sexually and you you cannot speak up because of the environment where you are you're scared and also just always encourage the girls around to speak up and also encourage your boy child to uh, educate your boy child about gender equality you know these things start from the base like if you grow up in an environment your mother always tell you that this is how women are supposed to, this is what uh, women are supposed to do, this is what men are supposed to do and all. So if you grow up in an environment where you are well educated, I think it's going to be best for all. And at, uh, this gender equality, the only way we can fight gender inequality isn't just by women doing that alone. If men put in the work too, the, it's going to be a better place. Like if men are actually doing the work, I think the fight for gender inequality is going to be is going to be faster than if only women that so educate your sons like your boy child about gender equality and also try as much as you can to um, encourage these young girls to speak up also uh, another thing i would like to say is uh, there's something that's like lack, there's lack, there's lack of confidence. A lot of girls are facing lack of confidence, which, which makes them not to be empowered. When you have this lack of confidence and self-esteem, it right. also makes you not to be empowered. So normalize, uh, normalize encouraging people and these young girls, normalize speaking to them positively, like tell them you can do this. You are, you're a queen, you are, you're beautiful. You can do it, you're strong, you're intelligent normalize inflicting self-confidence to these girls so that's one thing i would tell the world yeah to do and 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 i hope because the people have have the idea like i mentioned before that that is going to give that their, their head goes swell then they start the, 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 the people to now come and now overpower the men that's not what we're talking about i hope everybody understands that we are saying talking about the kind of empowerment self-esteem and self-worth that makes a woman productive so for the benefit of her husband and her children and the nation as a whole, the community as a whole, not the you can't climb from my head kind of a thing, it's what some people fear. That's the reason why. So you, did I catch you saying, do you eventually want to have a center, a physical center? Or it's good? To yes. A yeah. Okay. A physical center. Right. We vision having a physical where we can have a lot of girls, like, and, and they can enroll, like, a school, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of um, the the year, you go out, you you graduate with a certificate. Yeah, that kind of a thing. You can actually go out of the enroll in the school for and for the different programs, and for then, the different programs. Correct, and then graduate with a, 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 a with a specialty, whatever your specialty has been that you did did there. 
uh, child care, education, uh, arts and crafts kind of thing, wherever your own sector is. That is a wonderful dream to have. And they say it always starts like that, with a dream, with a vision. And then everything else will fall into place because you never know. Somebody listening to this could say, I have this property somewhere, I have this building somewhere, they could use it for that. And then and grow from there. Do you have an idea where you'd like it to be? Where you where do you see that 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 uh, physical building being, Boya, Duala, or wherever it happens? I'll say Boya mm -hmm. because we have a lot of um, girls from undeserved communities, and also there is another thing: being ready to learn. I think um, the IDPs in Boya are actually ready to mm -hmm. learn. Um, compared to in dwellers, they are they are most of them are not actually ready for the for the learning process. So it's good to go to people who are actually ready, so it makes the journey easier. All so right. I think Boya is, a, and considering the fact that um, the crisis has made a lot of people to be um like there are not a, opportunities for a lot of people due to the crisis. So I think Boya is a better zone to provide. For that. For, for them. All right, then. Uh, if you don't have anything else to uh, 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 add as a last word, then I would say it was really, really refreshing to talk to because you are young. I can see that. You are young. And most of the time, people you're at your age, within your age bracket, are, they're like, hey, let me live my life. I'm enjoying myself. Trip here, trip there. Uh, fascinators here and there. And the whole nine yards. Not that there's anything wrong with that or that you don't do those. But I'm just impressed to see that somebody this young also cares about the community deeply enough to do what it is that you've already done. What you've done there already, some people would in, in uh, what, three quarters through their lives haven't done as much. So we wish you definitely all the success in the world. We hope that the, your, your ideas will take root. We hope that your dreams and, and aspirations will actually come to fruition. So by the time we talk to you next, You'd say there's this building here. We have this number of ladies over there. And that what you're doing has even expanded. Because what you're doing already now counts. Every bit, everybody does, anybody does counts. You say one person from the ditch, that is, that person's life matters. So you've already done something, but the more we do and we can replicate this, the better. So I really, I'm very glad to have had you on the show. And I'm just, I just wish you the very best. So the last word is yours before we close up. Thank you very much for giving me this platform and um, you have made me to be able to express myself and talk more about an initiative and organization. So I'm just uh, encouraging anybody who is listening to it now, if you have any worry or maybe any concerns about your a, a daughter or someone you have seen who isn't really able to be empowered, you can maybe tell her to contact us because we have, mentor, we have a mentorship program coming up and we would like girls like that to participate. Also, we encourage anyone who would like to maybe sponsor or uh, support us to maybe contact us through our social media handles and our email and number right there. Thank you so much. Bosa World Radio platform and opportunity. You're very Thank welcome. Thank you. I'm going to read that number out for those who are on the radio because those who are going to watch on YouTube will, will be able to replay the thing and rewind and forward. But the number I see here is 6532959982. That's the number that I see here on the on the thing. I don't see the email address right there. Just my problem not, not looking where I should be looking. But would you mind, do you mind giving us what the email address would be real quick if somebody wants to just shoot an email? Do you know it's trends. Uh -huh. Email. She is strength24 at gmail.com. She is strength24, like 24 at gmail.com, yeah. like the year 2024. That's the idea at gmail.com. Okay, so that's another way to contact them and then just go on social media. Look for she is strength organization, O R G. So search for yeah. it. Listen to us now and just go on your cell phone. Any search, anything that has a search engine will pull it up for you with the logo there. It has the uh. A, a woman's head in purple with a fist right there through the through right there on the in the head with the lady has kind of like a fro an afro that's how you can recognize the logo very easily and then they are on Instagram on well, Twitter is called what now X 
and uh, anywhere else you can find it. You can find it or reach out to Busa World Radio and we will point you in that direction. So, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for listening or for watching, depending on what it is that you do. And we, uh, we say rendezvous next time to find even more guests like uh, Maeva right here, who is such an inspiration. So thank you, Maeva, for coming. Thank you, too. Thank All you. Right. Bye, everybody.